Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a look at OpenSUSE 15.3 Leap. Somebody asked me to have a look at this, and so I wanted to take a quick gander and uh, see if that was worth doing a full review over. And uh, this isn't like a full review. I uh, just kind of want to give you an overview, look at a few of the things that are just changed, and just kind of talk about a few things that are on their release notes that are really interesting as far as this is concerned. So if you are unaware of OpenSUSE, they do have two branches. One of these is Tumbleweed, which is a rolling, think Arch. So if you like the OpenSUSE platform and you do want to do something that is rolling, they do have the Tumbleweed for this. The Leap is the regular release schedule. It has a little bit more of the stability, think more Debian instead of Arch. And this is an update. This leap update is a good significant update because it brings with it a lot of interesting little behind the scenes things. Now, the first and the most significant for people using SUSE in an enterprise environment is 15.3 isn't just based on the enterprise level distribution. It actually is from the enterprise level distribution. Meaning that if you are utilizing OpenSUSE to test changes in an enterprise environment, OpenSUSE Leap 15.3 is a direct relationship to the difference between the enterprise and the non-enterprise. And so with this, you have the ability to install this. It's going to have all of the same packages, everything from the enterprise version. And so now you can actually test everything a little bit better, a little bit more robust. So we all know if we test something in one platform, move to another one, and sometimes not everything is exactly the same between your environments. So they did spend some time talking about that. Most of the packages do remain, remain the same. So this is something that it's not a major radical change. It's not like this was old as dirt and now, you know, it's old as dust. It's it's really is an up to date. But the one thing that they wanted to do is they did give us uh, XFCE. 416. And I'm not sure I've actually looked at 416. And for me, that was like, okay, that's a little bit of a clincher for getting this guy running. Let's just go ahead and have a brief look at what this particular version of XFCE looks like. They have new icons, new palettes. In theory, it looks a little bit better out of the box, has a little bit better settings manager. So who knows? Maybe they're slowly bringing XFCE into the modern days. So when you install this, there are a few different ways you can get this guy installed. Uh, you, they have a desktop version, which uh, you can use as a live key, and that runs, I believe, XFCE. What I did is I used the net install, and then you have the option between a minimal desktop, Plasma, uh, GNOME, XFCE. I think that was it. Or, of course, server, so no desktop environment. And uh, the biggest downside on this is while the net installer was very small, very quick to download, 100 and something, I think it's 164 megabytes, very small downloader, the installation actually took over an hour. I started the installation. I'm like, wow, this is taking a while. And I went out and did a whole lot of things. So I'm actually recording this video two hours later than I usually record my videos uh, as far as uh, for Premiere on my Saturday morning. And so the installer does take a long time. It's not like a Linux Mint or an Ubuntu or anything else that actually installs. I've had Arch distributions that install infinitely faster than this. Fortunately, you don't have to install it every single day. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. So Leap can migrate to an existing server, a VM, or a container to use SUSE Linux Enterprise within a very short period of time. There's a turn on feature for that. And they did actually have some information here in their notes about artificial intelligence and machine learning. Sensor Flow is a network for deep learning can be used by data scientists. There's PyTorch, Onyx. So there's a few different options there. Desktop environments, we have Plasma 518. We have GNOME 334. That's pretty old at this point in time. Uh, and then, of course, this one has the new XFCE. So there we have it. Uh, 15.2 two will have end of life six months from today or maybe yesterday or two days ago, whenever this was done. So if you are on a uh, on 
um, OpenSUSE Leap, you are going to want to upgrade. So with that, let's go ahead and boot on the desktop environment here, and um, we'll go ahead and have a look at what this looks like. So here's our booting screen here. It says Leap. We have a little scrolling window there, and then it's going to land us on the login manager. So here we are on the desktop, and uh, I believe I probably uh, clicked the button to auto login. I did not actually land on a login window here. So when you install it, they have the option enabled or disabled to set up the um, um, auto login or not. And I guess the default probably is set to auto login because uh, I didn't change anything in there and uh, I don't have a login window. So over here, when you first land here, we have the basics, we have the documentation. So if you want an RTFM, whatever else, you have that as an option. You can go ahead and hit get the uh, contributions and things like that. Now, the first thing I want to point you to is the get software. One of the things like OpenSUSE is not going to be the best for a brand new Linux user because they do manage things quite a bit differently. First, we have a software distribution that is, you can see, web-based. And so you can go in here and choose where you're going to be looking for something, and then maybe you can search for the package that you want to use. So here's Chromium. You can go ahead and search for whatever you're looking for. If you want to do a search for Office, you can see what type of Office um, applications you have. So you can see that there's, um, they do take a little bit different approach. This isn't completely unique. There are some other distributions. Of course, GNOME extensions work the same way. And then if you click on one of these guys here, you can go ahead and do the expert download. I don't even know exactly how to use this thing. Let's go ahead and just click on this. Uh, here's that. Okay, there's download the package. And this is probably, is this an RPM probably? Not sure. So you can add the repository and install manually. You can grab binaries. So it is quite a bit different on this option here. Now that's not the only place you can download software from. If you go into the menu and type in software, you can see that they have the YAST software. You need to enter your uh, password there. And then it's going to update all the repositories and then give us something that we can't really browse it, but we can search it. So you can come in here and um, you'll kind of see this is where it is. Here's installation summary. Here's views. Here's, I guess you can do package classifications, recommended, orphaned. So you can kind of see that you can go in here and click all and that's going to take a while, but then it will... Um, it will eventually show you all the packages. If you know what you're searching for, you can go ahead and uh, search for it here. So if you do that, you have here the option to just go ahead and install what you need to install. Very much operates very much like your um, Synaptic Package Manager if you are more used to a uh, Debian. And then, of course, they do have a package manager, which is going to be a Zipper. And uh, I don't remember exactly how to install something in Zipper. Let's just go ahead and see if install Zipper and Chromium will do that. Uh, except I do need to do this as sudo. That's pretty typical. Let's go ahead and do that. So there you go. It's going to install your one new package. So it is a very easy to use system. Uh, they do use RPM, so very much like Fedora. This is why if you are downloading software, for example, my print drivers are available as a .deb or a .rpm. I could use the .rpm to install it on OpenSUSE or Fedora one and the same. So you can see here that it is downloading Chromium and installing. It is going to be a little bit different of a system if you're not used to it. Uh, everything here is going to be managed with YAST. So if you go ahead and start YAST up, it basically gives us an entire manager here, which gives us everything from software management, online updates, software repositories, and then all of the other functions and options that we have in, to change things around. So here's just the hardware. So here's your configure printers, and then here it will search around for a printer, and um, you know there's no printer on my network right now. I keep my printer turned off unless I'm actually using it. So um, there you have it. Here's um, 
bootloaders. I think I accidentally clicked our partitioning tool. Let's go ahead and click yes, see what we have in there. So here is a partitioner, so you can go in here and make any changes to your disk partitions. One of the things I really like about YAST is it is, it's a good compromise to teach you a little bit more about how things are, are working under the hood without having to rely entirely on a terminal base. That's one of the reasons I always liked OpenSUSE up, is that uh, it's, it, it does carry with it a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, ability to learn how the Linux system is working out of the box. It's uh, still downloading our Chromium package here, 98% complete. There's 99. And now it's checking for file conflicts. And it is now installing. So that should install pretty quickly. You can see over here, we can manage everything inside of YAST, inside of OpenSUSE. Now, some of the things I want to look at is how does your XFCE behave? And um, there's your settings editor, settings manager. I think this is your XFCE settings. So over here, we have YAST is in here because that is your... Um, uh, that is your uh, major manager for all things system inside of OpenSUSE. Here's package update preferences. I think that this is uh, something packed with OpenSUSE probably. So this will tell you how frequently is it going to update the cache to check for software. And then all of the other functions in here. These are the systems that are um, consistent with uh, how XFCE generally runs. So I don't see as far as the UI is concerned, basic functionality. I'm not seeing a ton of different uh, differences here with this XFCE versus other ones. Here we have an option of changing around your uh, panels. Go with GNOME 2, Redmond, XFCE 4.12, 4.14, Zubuntu base. So these are going to adjust how the panels are going to look. So let's just... Um, Save, expert, apply. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and apply this. You can see that we can easily change the panels around. Here's your OpenSUSE 15 leap. So as far as the UI is concerned, I'm not really seeing any major advantage here to me as an end user in, um, uh, in XFCE. But nevertheless, it does look a little bit cleaner. That could be the theming setup. The software itself we have, uh, of course, we just installed Chromium. We have Firefox, Mail Reader, Remna, Thunderbird. There's a web browser, just generic. Pulse Audio, Perl Media Player. Don't call my officer, man. That's kind of interesting. All right, here we have LibreOffice. So not a lot of excess applications, definitely not a bloated system. So there we have it out of the box. The biggest selling point of this is if you want to learn a little bit more about Linux, uh, if I remember correctly, I think OpenSUSE's philosophy is uh, very much like Fedora's philosophy in that it is primarily open source a little bit more difficult to get some of the non-open source functions actually working in it, but certainly worth learning. This is an excellent distribution for learning Linux, and it also carries with it a good balance of UI tools. So here's the uh, update preferences. Here's your install updates. Here's your preferences about the update notifier. We have the package manager in Zipper. A little bit different than some of the other ones that I generally use, but uh, it is certainly an easy and intuitive package manager as well. The biggest selling point on this guy here is it allows you that bridge to go into the enterprise. So if you're utilizing a SUSE in the enterprise environment, you want to use Leap 15.3 in order to do a full testing before moving into that enterprise. That is going to be your biggest selling point. That's the biggest under the hood change inside of this distribution. So would I recommend it? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I don't think OpenSUSE is particularly an amazing distribution. I don't think it's a bad distribution. It's right there in the middle ground. If you love OpenSUSE, definitely upgrade to this, particularly if you're using Leap because you only have six months left on the old version. 
and it does have with it some compelling reasons to to use it. I did have a couple of conflicts in the virtual machine. Uh, the first, as I said, it took over an hour to install. The second is as I was actually recording this video, for some reason it would not boot. I had to stop the video, go back, reload it in safe mode, shut it down, and then reboot it again. It took about five times to get to this actual video. That's probably a virtual machine thing rather than anything else. But as far as uh, that is concerned, um, I'm, less, I'm less worried about that because my virtual box is getting very old and it's very much time to update this computer and that will be done shortly. So with that, OpenSUSE 15.3 Leap is out. It is certainly worth upgrading if you're using 15.2. Uh, it carries with it the newer packages. It carries with it uh, the newer XFCE, which Definitely looks good, definitely looks clean, not radically different from what it has been. That's a problem that I've been encountering with Linux distributions lately. We They have matured, and as they mature operating systems, there's not a ton of differences going from one version to the next other than a few new packages are, are out there, a few new features are added in, and uh, you can dive into the XFCE or the OpenSUSE docs to see what exactly has changed. From the end user's perspective, not a whole lot has changed, but still it is a good and compelling distribution. So there's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on OpenSUSE down below. Is it something you're regularly using? And do you prefer the Leap or the Tumbleweed version? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.